Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Meng's 135th scale Panther. This is the late one. Now, they've obviously come out with a load of new types of Panthers, some beautiful ones out there, and a little bit like buses, shall we say. Seems to be not a lot of Panthers, and then all of a sudden, everybody's doing them. But anyway, this is Meng's latest one. As you can see, beautiful box art uh, with the Zimmerit coating on it and stuff like that, okay? So, quick run around on the box. You've got all your colour call outs in uh, AK Interactive, as you can see down in here. All right, so we've got some nice ones down there. Kit number for this one is TS035, being the Tyrannosaurus range of things. Okay, obviously talking a little bit about the uh, uh, late version down in there. And then obviously up on the end, we just got the same. So down in the box, we have a little squeeze. Okay, so down in here, let's that there. you can see, first thing we are greeted for with is a massive load of tracks, so loads of fun down in there. Ooh, okay, <laughs> German primer, <laughs> colour, plastic, that's, um, yeah, keen on the eye, shall we say. All right, so you can see various parts down in there. Okay, and then we've got all the various things, and then we've got a couple of nice bits down at the bottom here, including that all important manual. Sorry, I'm knocking everything fly. Right, okay, so that's your colour call out. So let's have a look down in here first. So, as you can see, uh, usual thing, talking about the, uh, the actual piece of armour itself in the various languages, as you might expect. Different versions, it looks like you can do down in here. So you've got seven different versions, including it looks like one of the test bed ones as well, one of the captured ones in American markings, which again, something a little bit different with there. So keeping an eye on those. Usual things you might imagine, pretty armor, standard all the way through. Uh, running with a gear, obviously the road wheels, things like that. Working with a hull, so it is multi-point hull, and you've got to open up some hulls, so just be careful with that. Then it's just going to be a case of putting this all together. Um, it isn't full interior, as you might imagine. This is just an external one. So we haven't got like working uh, torsion bar suspension or anything else like that. It's just simulated. Got the tow, uh, the lifting jack underneath, all the various parts going down that and through. Okay, and then we've got the exhausts uh, out the back. The tracks, which again, we did a review of one uh, piece of armor very recently. This is exactly the same thing. So um, it is 87 links on each side. You are gonna have to put them in there. Uh, it does look like we get a template as well, which is quite nice for actually doing it. But you have got to put the sort of guide eyes into this, and it looks like the actual uh, plates as well. So that's going to be a few evenings of fun. Okay, and then really working on the top half of the actual hull again, putting in all the plates, uh, various things you might imagine. We've got the exhaust again, opening up holes specific to different versions, just keep an eye on all of that. Okay, and then running down on the other sides and adding all the lumps, bumps and bits and pieces you might imagine until you've got the top half of the hull going down in there just like that. Towing eyes, bumpers, uh, hoods, various things like that all going through. And then obviously we've got some more stowage items going onto the outside as well with a very nice link system going in to hold those in place. Okay, and then all the gear being put on there. So obviously you've got the gun cleaning tubes, things like that, uh, and everything else. So we've got the uh, unditching beams as well being fitted on there and put through. So I wonder what that actually was, that explains that. Side armor plating as well being fitted onto those. And then it's into the top turret. And again, different way of doing the actual top turret, having this framework system, and then it puts all into there. But again, being specific to different ones, keep an eye out for your calls. Then it's up into the actual meat of the actual tank. So we've got the main gun being fitted on there. And then obviously all the lumps and bumps that are gonna go on the side of the turret. And there we go, that's it. Again, it's nothing difficult about it. It's a straightforward kit. It's not like one with the full interior and you're gonna to have to do all of that. So if you are looking for something just to look at, and you know, don't get me wrong, I think they're absolutely fantastic. You know, this could be one for you. Okay, so we've got those all important color call outs. So, Different camo patterns, we'll just have a blast through them, but as you can see, all the different versions, that's really nice, that woodland one as well. So that's actually very, very nice with a sort of more mottled look rather than the stripes going right the way through. This is that uh, one, so uh, this is uh, in Warsaw, actually. There's me thinking it's American markings, obviously with American markings for friendly, but it's a Warsaw one. So yes, uh, obviously captured uh, and put through its paces just like that. Very nice, something a little bit different. And then on the other side, your other versions with the camos are all very similar, as you might imagine, right the way through those. Again, some nice options down in there. We do have some very nice 
uh, areas. We, I don't think we really need to get this out. You can see lovely bit of photo etch just down on there like that. That's pretty good all the way through. And then obviously on the inside, we've got the metal plates for those side ones sort of in the steel. And we've got this very nice braided towing cable down in there and your decals just in a pack. And then we are into the parts. Again, I think we can probably get away with actually not debagging all this lot because they're in very nice clear parts. But you can see we've got various ones down in there like that. That's that guide you can see there on the top for the actual track, which is actually quite good. So that way you can actually put those in uh, and have the right angles with it, which is uh, a very nice way of doing it just like that. So no problem with that one. And then obviously we've got this one down in here for that turret. So the turret system itself on this framework and then right the way through. There is no zimmer on any of this, so you're gonna to have to put that on yourself if that's what you're doing. But the late ones, did they bother in the late ones? I thought the, the later ones, they didn't have it. So that's maybe what it hasn't got it on here, as opposed to what's being shown on the box art. The lower, as you can see, very nice job on that one. Some nice parts down in there. Everything's in your typical Meng, as in all the ejector pins are very much flush nothing sticking out we've got nice textures up here on the tops and things so again very nice with the actual uh, texture to the top of these okay and some very nice details running right the way through on them but it is that thing of you know as i say hopefully you can see it sort of on the close-up it's yeah it's just it's the color color puts you off doesn't it i don't know if, i know why they've done it because it's technically the primer color but it's still a bit icky Okay, just to look at. And again, there is some actually some very nice touches down in here. Like for instance, we've got this one with the this metal uh, cast look to the surface. Hopefully, there you go. You can see it just through the plastic there. Actually, that's actually really nice detail. But everything else is pretty much spot on. There's no flash anywhere. I can't see any sink marks or anything. Main's normally pretty good. That's why we don't really need to get these out and to to show it all, and again, you can probably see down on here, you see on the road wheels, right the way over, and all these parts. Very nice track pads, obviously being fitted down in here. Again, it's, it's one of those ones with them, they really do a very, very nice job. It's sharp, concise details all the way through. And then obviously tracks. So yes, you've guessed it, there is an absolute ton of uh, tracks down in here. Uh, as we make our way through, sorry, just need to click that one. Uh, a lot of fun, I must admit. It's one of those ones you look at it and it's like really imposing when you think, oh my god, I've got to put all these together. Obviously, you could go down the aftermarket route if you wanted to, uh, but actually, I think you spend a little bit of time in here, you save yourself a small fortune, and you come up with something really, really nice as well. Clear parts, as you might imagine, it's just the periscopes, there's not a lot to see on that one. And there we go. It is what it is. As I said, I'm not massively excited about it because there's no real innovations into it and all that type of thing. It is that standard Panther, you know, just a pure external one uh, and those things. I do like the internal ones, but obviously you have to imagine there's a lot of work you're never gonna see unless you're gonna display it in a correct way. And I've still yet to find anybody who's displayed one. What I think it really shows it off to its best because obviously we did the King Tiger uh, and we had that fully opened up with all that gorgeous interior, but trying to display it in a way that makes it look nice is very difficult. And sometimes I often feel I'd rather see a tank as a tank. So then something like that, which would be a very very straightforward build. I can't see any problems with that. You're going to end up with a beautiful looking uh, panther straight out of the box, especially if you're doing it from a diorama point of view or a diorette or something else like that. It will look absolutely stunning. Um, and again, it's Meng. You know it's going to go together really nicely. As far as I'm concerned, Meng are probably just like the Tamiya uh, these days. They do beautiful pieces of armor that fit extremely well. Um, and to be honest, all the ones I've used, I've used no real filler on them. I've had no real problems with them. So I can't imagine this one's going to be any different at all. But there we go. That is the Meng 135th scale Panther Late. Thank <laughs> you.